with 45 seconds to go on the floor. And finally a defensive rebound for Carl Malone. The shot drops in their favor and they play it smart. Ten on the 24. Stockton getting the screen. Stockton with the pass. Shannon Anderson having all kinds of trouble around the basket, going up for the shot. And keep an eye on Scottie Pippen. He is going to touch the rim right there before that shot is even reached. Actually grabbed it. Sherry Sloan all over the official, wanting a goaltend there. Steve Javi just came over and explained, saying the official said that ball had no chance to go in, wasn't involved in the shot, no goaltend. And Scotty hit the rim and then just put his hand on it. He didn't hang on it. The ball had no chance to go in, and, and, the, gra and the grab didn't affect the shot. Well, let's check in with Ahmad over at the Chicago bench. All right, Marv, no surprise. During that timeout, Michael Jordan kept saying over and over, give it to me, give it to me. So he will be isolated. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, Ahmad, well, Jerry Sloan was saying, don't run away from Michael. Stay with him this time. Whatever you do, stay with him. If you're picked off him, get right back to him. Marv? All right, Jim, 25 seconds in regulation. Game tied at 86. Four-second differential between the 24-second clock and the game clock. It is Michael Jordan time. Scotty Pippen looking, looking for Michael Jordan. Checks the clock. Five on the 24. Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. Steve Kerr with seven of his nine points in the fourth quarter. You'll recall he missed a very important shot in game four that led to the Chicago loss to Utah. Remember the statement from Charles Barkley about a month ago? If he had a game on the line, one shot to take, the man to take it, well, to Barkley, would be Steve Kerr. Well, he wanted it, and he told Michael Jordan in that huddle, as the bomber shot told us, if you let my man leads to double stop it, I am stepping right into that shot. And Steve let it go with confidence. Now the question is, how will the Jazz play it? You look for the best possible shot. You look for the three. You look for the two. You on the move, go with either Stockton, preferably on the move to set up Brian Russell or Shandon Anderson. Well, Russell will inbound. He's been the hot man from three-point range. And they took the, uh, the delay of game. Wanted to get a look at uh, what Utah was about to do. Five seconds remaining in regulation. The inbound.
a terrific season, a record of 64 and 18, a franchise record, but this is how it concluded for the draft. Marv, the height of Tony Kukoc on the inbounds pass, he deflected that ball, and when it bounced, Scotty just dove for it, and then the finishing slam for Kukoc to cap it. That was Shannon Anderson on the floor, not really a threat. Scotty Pippen looking to hang in the middle of the floor so quick to it, and then having the wherewithal to knock it loose to Kukoc before he can get fouled. And Phil Jackson, so called, tore a piece with himself. <laughs> and then the triumphant fist in the air. And he starts whistling the true sign of a coach.
And once again, the Chicago Bulls are the 1997 champions. Now for the presentation of the 1997 championship trophy. And I'm joined by Jerry Reinsdorf, chairman. Jerry Krause, vice president of operations. Co-captains, Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, head coach Phil Jackson. And now for the presentation of the award, here's the commissioner, David Stern. Two great teams showed the world the best of NBA basketball, but there can only be one champion. And the Chicago Bulls are the 1997 NBA champions. An extraordinary effort. Congratulations, Chicago. Congratulations, Chicago Bulls. Congratulations, these spectacular players. Here it is, the trophy. finals once again here's the commissioner who could it be five finals five championships five MVPs he showed us he's the best basketball player in the world he's got the most courage we've ever seen congratulations Michael Jordan 1997 finals MVP you got to feel like this is, in fact, a dynasty. Well, it's incredible. It, it never gets less exciting, but we beat an incredible team. I mean, this is the toughest team that we played in the playoffs, and it's, they, they really ought to be co-champions. What a, what a courageous team Utah has, and what a great victory for our club and for our fans. Tonight, as great as our players were, the energy and the life in this building, I know, made the difference of putting them over the top. So thank you, all the fans of the Chicago Bulls.